Oh, gross. Much better. All right, let's get into it. So today's topic is going to be isolates. Isolates are sort of a complex topic, but they're pretty important if you have a complex app. We're going to explain a little bit about how they work and then show you an actual example with some code. So let's get into it. All Dart code runs in an isolate. That's why they're so important because our whole program and everything that goes on within our a Dart application runs within an isolate. So what exactly is an isolate? One isolate contains memory and an event loop and that's where all the code runs. So it stores things in the memory and then whenever an event happens, it obviously goes into the event loop. The event loop is just a thread that executes the events that happen within our app. If you're coming from Java or C++, you might know that multiple threads can use the same memory in those languages. In Dart, it's completely different. Isolates cannot share memory between each other. So you can think of an isolate as its own little box that executes logic in its own thread. So then since it's all separate, you can easily have more than one isolate within your app. And that's how you can have multi-threaded applications using Dart. But just because you can have multiple isolates running doesn't mean you should. For the most part, most apps you only need one event loop and one isolate running all of your code. The only time it's really necessary to have multiple is when you have very complex logic that will take up time and stop frames from being rendered in the main loop. So my recommendation is unless your app really needs it, stick with one isolate and only create a second isolate if you really, really need it. So there's two ways to create a new isolate. The first way is using isolate.spawn. This just basically creates a new isolate and then you have actions you can perform on that isolate like kill and many more. The second option is using the compute function. Although both options can pretty much do the same thing, the compute option seems like the better way to do some hard logic that takes a lot of time. Now, if you remember, we mentioned at the beginning that the, each of these isolates do not have access to each other's memory. But obviously there are situations where you would need to have access to the data that, that's in the other isolate and vice versa. So there is a solution for this. You can create a send port and a receive port. These are pretty much streams where you can send data between the two isolates. And you can set up a send port and a receive port on each side so you can send data between them as much as you want. As you can see, these isolates are very isolated. And that's where they actually get the name for isolate. All right, so let's jump into the code and show you how isolates work within a Flutter app. All right, so here we have some really simple code. All we have in here is a simple add button. There's no isolates in here, just a stateful widget with text and a raise button that increases the count. So now let's add an isolate to this. So we are going to run our isolate from the init state function. Like we went over in the written part, you need to do isolate dot spawn. You will see it will import a dart isolate dependency. And then here we need to define two variables. One is the actual function we want to run. And the other one is the parameters we want to pass to it. So the function needs to be declared out of any class. Since the main isolate that runs the whole app is running these classes, you need to create the function outside of those classes so that it's not associated with that main isolate. So we're going to call our function isolate function and we're going to just pass it a number. And we can go back to this isolate spawn called the isolate function. We'll give it a value of 1000. And we're going to do something really simple and have a local count that goes through a for loop and increments until the number that we pass to the isolate function. If our count is divisible by 100, we'll just create a print statement just to show you that it actually works. So now we refresh, we should see a bunch of print statements pop out. So how do we know that it's actually in a different isolate? Well, it's pretty easy to prove it to you. If we create a breakpoint here, we refresh, you'll see this breakpoint will execute. So our isolate is paused. That means it's not running and we're able to still add everything in our normal app. You notice if we create a breakpoint here, we're just able to add it once and then nothing works anymore because the program is paused. But as long as our isolate is paused, that's no problem. And if you're using VS Code, you will actually see on the bottom left side, you have your main isolate running and then you have our isolate function paused. So if we run it, you'll see 100 will pop out. We can run it again, 200. And we can even put a breakpoint here if you wanna see increment by one. It just printed the last one, but you'll see the value i equals 300, i equals 301, 302. And our isolate function is executing in a completely different isolate 
or thread. So now you can do very heavy and difficult computations within the other isolate and your main app will keep running and not be worried about any of the information that's going on in there. So now let's create something using the compute function. So we'll create a second button called add an isolate and we'll have a function called run compute that will return us a future. Now for our compute function, we also need to define it outside. Our function will be very similar to the isolate function, except one little difference, it will actually return an integer from it. In this case, we'll just return the count, which is going to be the same count that we pass in. It's not really logic that makes sense, but you can see how this can be used for more complex logic. So now in our run compute function, we can set the state of count to await for our compute function to finish. We define it the same way as we did with the spawn isolate, and then we can call set state after this. And now we should be able to get some logic going on in the background that will affect our app. So now we have an isolate that will do some logic that will get reflected into our app. So we can actually set a breakpoint here to see, make sure it works again. And then we can use the rest of the app without it being finished. So we click add an isolate. You see our breakpoint will hit, but we can still add values within the app. We're not worried about that at all. Then if we remove it, you will see all the print statements pop out at the bottom and you'll see our value update to 2000 here. Just like that. So that's a quick explanation on isolates. This topic goes a lot deeper, so you can do some research on your own and learn about how you control the isolates differently, how you can use send port and receive port, because we didn't cover those, but we covered the basics and what an isolate actually is and how it works. So once again, I want to reiterate, you don't really need to use isolates unless you're doing very heavy computation. For example, this app doesn't make any sense to use isolates. We're just counting numbers and we only count it to 2000. Maybe if we count it to 1 million, it might be worth it. But even then, Flutter and Dart is already pretty fast itself. So you shouldn't need to use isolates that often. And if you do, then hopefully I was able to help you understand them a little bit today. So this code will be on GitHub. The link is in the description. If you have any questions or anything, make sure to leave it in the comments. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.